Wow. Two videos, two weeks. This is kind of my New Year's resolution is to stop being a slacker with this stuff. So there's uh, so many other flies out there that, listen, there's billions and billions, millions of videos on YouTube now, but everybody's got their own way of doing things. I, I'm just going to share with you how I like to do some stuff um, and also give you some different tips to make some things a little easier. Uh, today we're going to tie a very basic alder wet fly. This is a great caddis pattern. It's been around for quite some time. Um, and I've seen some winged wets that have been tied online by some very good tires. Um, and they like to use some different techniques on fixing that wing. Um, and a few of them, not to call anybody out, uh, they're taking the fibers that they're using, whether it's mallard, you know, primary or, you know, turkey, and they're I didn't get that. making it. And yeah, you like that, Siri? Didn't get that. That's scary. Um, they're using sections of the feather that aren't always the easiest to work with. So, you can see this here, and listen, you know me, I'm not about absolutes, but there are certain things that do come into play when you're tying with certain materials because there's characteristics and principles of those materials that you might want to take into consideration when you're tying. It's kind of like with bucktail, we've talked about bucktail before. I've seen some interesting videos out there where somebody will tell you that this is this section of a bucktail is the only part of hair that they use for X, Y, and Z or whatever. And I think to become general with things of that nature, you kind of put yourself, in, it's a good, I guess you could say starting point or area to look at or a baseline, but by no means does it mean that's good for every tail, right? So like bucktail, for example, I could lay out, and I did it in a newsletter recently, lay out 10 different bucktails and all of them have different hair characteristics and sections of hair that this piece on the upper part might be good on this one, but on, the, on this other tail it might not be. So I think you've got to take it as a case-by-case -case basis. Now when it comes to tying winged wets um, and using primary feathers, quill feathers, you know, turkey tail feathers, when you get, and I see this a lot, when I do, the, I'm going to do a video on tying like a basic hair zero wet and dealing with mallard primary feathers. As you move up, and this is stuff that's gotten lost in the mix, and if any of you, I know some of my people out there who are in the same generation as myself or older, we still rely more on books. That's where I learned a lot of my stuff and from going and getting classes with some of the old guard, many of which have passed. These are things that get lost in translation. That entire mallard primary feather is not, yes you can use it, but you're going to have fits with some of that feather the closer you get to the tip. And when I say the tip, the top. The most usable feather sections are typically on the bottom. That's where it's the softest. And it's actually the thinnest. As you get larger, and this is not this is a turkey feather. It's not a mallard quill. I'm going on a rant here. With mallard quills, as you, or primary feathers, as you get closer up to here, those fibers from this feather become thicker. They're more difficult to work with. They have a tendency to roll on the hook. They'll twist and turn. They'll give you that dreaded tent or split wing that is going to turn that thing into a prop. Winged wets, if they're tied properly, the feathers should be straight. Both pieces married together straight right on top of the hook. Just takes a little bit of practice. I'm going to show you how to do that today something that gets completely lost in translation. Winged wets look the best the second they are done being tied. That feather is not going to stay like that once you fish it. It's going to get tattered, mixed up, whatever. That is good. That's a fish catching attribute. That's how you want it. Okay? So, but if your quill feathers are splayed out like this, you can tent them a little bit, but you don't want it so drastic like this so they slide down on the hook and then out. This is what's going to happen with it when you fish it, which you don't want. 
you want those feathers together. So I'm going to talk about that today. And what better way to do it is to start with something extremely simple. The alder wet fly. And it also uses, it's literally three materials plus thread. Peacock hurl. A hen feather from a hen cape. And quill from a turkey feather. That's it. So I'll show you how to tie this guy. I'll talk about it a bit. There's a couple little tips in there that you can do that'll make it a little bit easier for you. And hopefully I can clearly articulate that for you in this video. So let's get started. Alright, so we are going to tie this guy right here. Which is an alder winged wet. And as I just said, if you take a look at it, you can see, ideally what you want to do is have the wing be together on top. That's how they should be properly tied, okay? Um, the hook I have in the vise today is an Arex wet fly, FW580. It's a nice little wet fly hook they just came out with. The thread that I'm gonna tie with today, and you can use Ada if you want, but I'm using 14 aught Beavis and Black. I'm gonna start this roughly about the point where I want my head to start on my fly. And I'm gonna leave a very long tag end of thread. Reason being is we're going to use that to spin a rope for our peacock curl. Leave that. If you got a, something to cradle it in or spring or something on your vise, just to get it out of the way, do so this time. Your thread's basically going to hang about the point where the, the barb starts. Now I'm going to go in and take two and you can get these off of peacock sticks to get your own hurl. I, I buy peacock eyes by the hundred. Um, so I go in and I'll grab two of them. You know, what I can't use off the eye, I save all those sticks because all those little pieces on there are peacock hurl. So we're going to go in, take two pieces together, tie them in, and work our thread right up to where we started it. Put yourself a little half hitch on there and then let your thread just rest on your bobbin rest. All right. What we're going to do next is, and ideally if you look in some of the old books, they explain to you how to fortify that peacock curl by spinning it in a rope with that strand of string, which is your long tag end. Now, when you do that, what you will find is there's going to be a point where in every piece of peacock curl is different. It may break. So what I like to do is I spin it. I, I wind it on the hook and then I'll spin it some more, wind it some more. So I'll grab that thread, sandwich it in between with my um, hackle pliers and I'll spin it so that it's a couple inches long, maybe an inch at best. And then I'm going to start to turn that and you can use your rotary function for this. Keeping it relatively tight. Thread tension's huge. And I'm going to spin it some more. This is going to give me that nice uniform peacock curl body that we're always looking for. That you'll see and if you just kind of brush that a little bit. Spin it a little bit more. Right up to the point where my thread is hanging. And I might need one more turn. So I've done that. Drop that out of the way. Take one turn, two turns three right over it so watch your thread there three in front trim it off and that's how you get your nice little fluffy uniform body and then I'm gonna bring my thread right back to that base where I want my hackle to start I've already pre-selected a hen feather you can affix this to the hook, same thing, cupped side facing it, rearward. You can strip away the fibers at the base, or what I like to do is just take your scissors and clip them as close as you can to the stem of that feather, as you see here. By doing that, it gives you something to 
let your thread bind into and then work your thread forward and I'll put a half inch on there so it doesn't come undone. That just gives your thread something to catch that feather when you go to wind it and it doesn't pull out. It's less apt to pull out. Now you watch it might pop out on me here because I might not have affixed it well enough but that's okay. So we're going to take and your first turn's huge, right? As long as it doesn't break on you. Mine just did. We're going to take one turn and before you do that, if you really want, you can kind of pull some of those fibers back. So it's going to be one turn all the way around and then two. As you see here. And then we're going to tie it off. So one turn, two turns, three. Three in front. I like to go in there if I can. Trim that off, then hold that rearward, work our thread right back to the base of where we want that. You don't have to put a half hitch on there, but I'm going to. Alright, now we've got the basis. I mean, you could just fish this just the way it is if you wanted, but now we're going to set our wing. And what you can do, you hear me talk about this, you're going to want to cut your two quills out of that turkey feather that are roughly the same um, and you want to make sure they're straight sometimes you'll get these um, feathers that are bent or they have a weird cup to them it's going to make it very difficult for you to set this wing and how you set this wing is entirely up to you what I like to do and I've already pre-done this I've taken the two of these and they're together so the easier way to make these things uh, usable and workable is, is you're going to take either a drop of head cement or you can use some UV resin. I know you guys all have heard me complain, oh, Rich is using UV resin again, oh my god, yeah, sparingly, okay. If I got to use big batches, I have a fan, a mask, all this nonsense I wear because I do get contact dermatitis from it. But what I do is I will take these two pieces and sections of quilt together and I will put a little drop on there, somewhere back of where I'm going to tie it in, and then hit it with the torch and that'll keep those two pieces of feather together. So then what we're going to do is, and how you set these wings, you've heard a lot of different people talk about how you set it. You can set it like this so that the curvature is like that or you can set your wing like so, which is how I'm going to set mine because that's the way I've always tied them and learned how to tie them as a kid and that's the way I like them to look when they fish. Like I said before, when you fish these, that wing is going to get all tattered so it doesn't matter. But when we finish this, we want to make sure that it's straight up and down so your wing would be kind of like my scissors are right now not split splayed All right so enough of me talking get back to tying when I go to tie this in I want that wing to go roughly to the end of where my hook bend is so back here once I have that I'm gonna transfer it to my left hand and the very first wrap I'm gonna make is gonna be one small loose wrap right around it Okay, just like so. If you didn't see that, and I might have to twist the thread out. One loose wrap right over it, and it's a pinch wrap that's going to go between my finger and my thumb, just like so. Then my second wrap is going to go right over it, and then I'm going to bring it right down. Now, see, mine kind of moved a little bit, so I'm going to move it again. I'm going to retie that. Didn't like it. I want that to be right about there. So one loose wrap through the finger and over, and then I pull it down. The second one. Okay. I've done this correctly, and it might take your first or second wrap because we want this to be affixed right on the top of the hook. Just like you see here. Okay. A couple turns once I've got that in place. I can take my scissors and just so we got that in place. As you see here, if it's slightly tattered out the get-go, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to fish this thing anyway. All right. So as you can kind of see here, your feathers should be together. And then we can just take our thread, 
make our little thread head. And however big that thread head is is entirely up to you. Smaller typically the better. If you're going to do these, make them look presentable, like I like to say. Come and clip it. If you want to have a presentation style head on here, it's real easy to do. Now you just take a little bit of resin. It's the quickest way to do it. Just got to bear with me because my lighting on this isn't that great. But it works out for you guys in the long run with the video. Let's make sure you didn't plug up the eye. Hit with your torch. Boom, and now you've got a presentation style wet fly. Um, how big of a thread head on there is completely up to you. I like them kind of small, as you can see here. But now you've got a nice wing that's basically seated right down the center on the top of that. And the easiest way to do that is just to use that little trick of adding that little bit of glue in there. And the reason I'm doing this right now, so you can see, once you fish this and this gets wet, that's what's going to happen to that wing right there. So as long as it's straight and set up on there when you tie it, you're good to go, my friend. That's it. Simple little one. I'll be doing a few more of these little wing wets as we go. Alright, hope you enjoyed. It's a quick one. Take care.